The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. An outstanding example, Lucky Strike. At 49, American. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Remember, year in, year out, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And here's what Mr. F.G. Clay, independent tobacco warehouse owner of Versailles, Kentucky, said. I've had a ringside seat at the auctions for 22 years. Up through the years, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco. Tobacco that's smooth and mild. I've smoked Lucky's myself for 13 years. Mr. Clay really knows tobacco. He has to. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. So remember, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. For your own real deep-down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. USS Saratoga, anchored in San Francisco Bay, the Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're all gathered aboard that valiant aircraft carrier, the USS Saratoga. In a few days, the Saratoga will be on its way to Bikini Atoll to participate in the history-making atomic bomb test. Tonight, it is our privilege to broadcast from aboard this great ship. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Saratoga, which is affectionately called Old Sarah, we bring you another old lady, and here she is, Jack Benny! This is Jack Benny talking, and Don, I must say that on an occasion like this, you could have gotten a better introduction and one with more dignity. Well, what do you mean, Jack? Well, for instance, since this is a fighting ship, you could have said we bring you Jack Benny, that old fighter. Or, since this ship is manned by salty sailors, we bring you that old salt. Do you understand? <laughs> well, yes, Jack, I'll try it again. Ladies and gentlemen, since we're broadcasting from under the crow's nest, we bring you that Never old... Never mind! <laughs> I was happier being an old lady. <laughs> anyway, Don, I want to tell you something, and I mean this seriously. I've been broadcasting for 15 years and have done programs from all over the world. But today, broadcasting from the Saratoga is the most thrilling experience I've ever had. Well, Jack, what about those broadcasts you did from New Caledonia and from Paris, France, and Cairo, Egypt? I'll admit they were exciting, Don, but here on the Saratoga, just before it leaves for the atom bomb test, just think of it. And now that I think of it, let's finish our program, eat those steaks, and get off of here as soon as possible. I mean, don't even wait for laughs, Don. Let's get off. Now, Jack, don't tell me you're afraid why this ship isn't leaving until next week. And that's what they say, Don, but uh, who knows when an admiral may decide to go fishing. <laughs> anyway, don't worry about me. Let's do a good show tonight because the sailors here have been in San Francisco quite a while and they're lonesome. Well, I don't know why they should be lonesome. I don't know why they should be lonesome at all. There are a lot of pretty girls in San Francisco. I know, Don, but the way this town is built, you know, with these steep hills, it's so hard to get a date. Well, what do you mean? Well, last night I followed a girl down California Street. Just as I got to her, she stepped aside and I fell in the bay. <laughs> So I, uh, I spent the rest of the evening with a mackerel. <laughs> Believe me, I didn't... Pardon me, Mr. Benny. Huh? Oh, what is it, sailor? I hate to interrupt the program, but Captain Ring told me to give you this note. It's urgent. Well, let me have it. Hmm. Hmm. My, this is serious. Oh, Don. Yes, Jack? Would you mind stepping a little more to the center? The ship is listing to port. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, thank you, Don. Does that straighten out the ship, sailor? I'll find out. Is that all right, Lieutenant? I'll find out. Is that all right, Commander? <laughs> I'll find out. Is that all right, Admiral? I'll find out. Is that all right, Ensign? <laughs> ensign? Only... Admiral, do you have to ask an ensign? Only today. His mom is listening in. Oh, oh, I see, I see. Well, look, sailor. Yes, sir? I'll try and keep Wilson in the middle of the ship, and if things aren't right, let me know. Yes, sir. Gosh, Jack, I, I can't believe that I could cause the ship to list. I'm not that big. You're not, eh, Don? You look like Knob Hill in slacks. <laughs> so just stay in the center of the ship. Hello, we'll... Jack. Hi, you fellas. How do you like being aboard the USS Saratoga? Gee, it's thrilling, Jack. And this morning, Commander Entler showed me all around the ship. Gosh, it was interesting. You know, there are a thousand men in the crew. Only a thousand? What do you mean, only? A thousand is a lot of men. To row a big ship like this? (laughs) Row? Jack, it so happens that... No, I'm not going to tell you. Tell me what. No, I can't tell you. It's a military secret. Oh, come on, Mary. Tell me. Well, Jack, since you were in the Navy, they got rid of the galley slaves. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, I won't tell anybody. Say, Mary, Jack! I... Jack, I'm sliding away from you. Don, get back in the center of the ship. <laughs> there, that's better. Say, Mary, on your little tour... Mary, on your little tour around the ship, did you learn any other interesting things? Yes, Jack. I saw Captain Ring climbing way up the superstructure. Then I saw him crawling behind the gun turret. And then I saw him slipping into one of the lifeboats. Really? I'll bet he was placing delicate instruments for the test. No, he was hiding Easter eggs for the boys. <laughs> now, isn't that nice? Captain must have a hard job every Easter coloring those powdered eggs, you know? <laughs> It isn't every captain that would... Hey, Mr. Benny, did you hear about the... Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Hey, Mr. Benny, did you hear about the... How do you feel, kid? Fine. Hey, Mr. Benny, did you hear about the... You look great, you know. (laughs) Thanks. Hey, Mr. Benny, did you hear about the... Hear about what? (laughs) Hear about what, Dennis? I better not tell you. It's a naughty joke. Well, Dennis, people shouldn't tell you those kind of jokes. I made it up myself. Oh. And now, fellas... It's about a traveling Boy Scout. Never mind. I don't want to hear it. Anyway, we haven't time for that now. You know, Dennis, we're all here aboard the Saratoga because in a few days it'll leave for the atomic bomb test. Oh, boy! Mr. Benny, what's an atomic bomb? I'm glad you asked me that, kid. You see, an atomic bomb is a very special kind of bomb. It's a bomb that's atomic. Now, you see, you see, atomic energy is composed of three different things. Neutrons, protons... And nylon. And nylon. (laughs) Thanks, Mary. Now, the scientists had no trouble getting the protons and neutrons, but only officers could get the nylon. (laughs) You see... You see, Dennis? Oh, Jack, what are you telling the kid all that stuff for? Leave him alone, Miss Livingston. He fascinates me. Thank you. Now, the big problem that faced us scientists was to split the atom. First, we had to use some uranium, which is better known as U-235. It was marked down from U-250, you see? That's Fred Allen walking up there. Then we put this... Then we put this... He's making a lot of noise on this ship, you see? Then we put this into a cyclotron. Mix it with neutrons. And add a pinch of salt. And add a pinch... Mary, (laughs) you use your recipe and I'll use mine. Anyway, Dennis, you mix the neutrons with the U-235 and then you treat all the elements with radar. Put them all together again and you have the atomic bomb. Gee, and my mother says you're a dope. (laughs) Oh, she does, eh? My father thinks you're a dope, too. Oh, yeah? But I don't think you are. Well, thanks, kid. But they think I'm a dope. (laughs) Dennis, that's enough. 
Now, Dennis, let's have a song. After all, you were in the Navy. These are your buddies, and they're all anxious to hear you. Okay. You know, Mr. Benny, last year when I was in the Navy, I sang on this ship. I know you did, kid. It must be nice being back here again. By the way, uh, would you like to say something to the boys before you sing? I sure would. Go ahead. Hey, fellas, do you want to hear the story about the traveling Boy Scout? <laughs> Dennis. A Boy Scout went into the woods and built a fire. Then a week later, he went back, and the fire was still burning. Still burning? Don't you get it? Get what? He spent the afternoon in the woods with his old flame. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Traveling Boy Scout. Go ahead and sing. Oh, Mr. Benny. Yes? You've got your fat announcer off center again. Don, keep your seam on the beam. <laughs> Go ahead, Dennis. Let's have your song. Come on. Remember April, sung by Dennis Day and accompanied by Phil Harris, and as makes you wish you were on the Enterprise Orchestra. <laughs> and now, fellas... Wait a minute, Jackson. Wait a minute. I heard that. Oh, hello, Phil. How are you, Jim? <laughs> Listen, Jackson, there's a time and place for everything, and I wish you'd have a little more respect for my musicians, especially in front of all these guys. What? My boy's done their bit. In fact, more than half of them were overseas. No kidding, Phil. Where were they? Alcatraz. <laughs> Alcatraz. Phil, are you crazy? Alcatraz is a prison. Then how come my boys all got discharge buttons? Let me see those buttons. Well, now, isn't that cute? A little file. <laughs> how nice. Anyway, Phil, I don't care where they came from. You've got a great band. I'm only kidding when I pan them. I'll say they're great. You know what, Jackson? I'm always tickled to death when I get back to San Francisco. I had my band here the first time at the St. Francis Hotel 20 years ago. No kidding. That's right. And Frankie, my guitar player, is the only boy that's still with me. Well, what do you know? Say, Phil, how come Frankie's been with you all these years? Jackson, if I had on you what he's got on me, I'd be the star of this show. <laughs> I 
I can believe. But listen, Phil, you won't be the star of this or any other show until you learn to come to rehearsal on time. What happened last night? Wasn't my fault, Jackson. It was so foggy I got lost. Oh, don't exaggerate, Phil. The fog doesn't get that thick. It doesn't, eh? During the war, they used to launch the victory ship from the top of the mark. <laughs> now, now, now you're being silly. No, she ain't, Jackson. That's where I always go to get launched. <laughs> Hit me on top of the head with a bottle of champagne. I'm sailing today. Well, can't you stay in dry dock for just one night? <laughs> and stop using the fog as an alibi. But, Jack, Phil's right. Between the fog and the hills in this, this is some town. Well, what are you talking about? Well, last night, some silly jerk followed me down California Street, and when I stepped aside, he fell in the bay. <laughs> What are you laughing at, Livy? Two hours later, I saw him at the Bell Tavern dancing with a mackerel. That was my girl. <laughs> to stop calling her a mackerel just because her eyes are on the side of her head. <laughs> and now, fellas... Every time a dance lasted more than three minutes, he had to throw her back in the water. Mary, cut that out. And now, fellas... Oh, Mr. Benny, the water's coming through the porthole. <laughs> Well, tell the Admiral to get the ship in the center of Don. It's easier that way. <laughs> anyway, Don, watch it. We don't want anything to happen to the ship before she goes out for the test. Say, Jack, uh, when are they going to unload the Saratoga? You know, take all the equipment off. Mary, they're not taking anything off. This ship is going to the test fully equipped. From the airplanes on the flight deck down to the dishes in the galley. Jack, do you mean to say that they're leaving everything aboard just as though she were going to battle? That's right, Don. Even the supplies in the ship's store? Everything. Even those lucky strikes that are so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw? Yes, Don. But, Jack, don't they realize that lucky strikes are made of the finer, the lighter, the naturally milder tobacco? Of course they do, kid. Of course. Well, all I can say is... If it's in the interest of science, I'm sure those little luckies will be glad to do their part. Good, Don. Good. Very good, Don. Very good. Don, Don, you're a hero. Now, if you'll turn around, I'll give the seat of your pants a 21-gun salute. <laughs> oh, Phil, how about a band number? You all set? Yeah. Say, Jackson, before I forget it, you want to go to the ball game with me tonight? No, thanks, Phil. I went over to Oakland and saw the game Friday night with Mary. And who do you think I saw there? Mary. She was with me. <laughs> now, guess again. Lefty O'Doul? No. Casey Stengel? No, you'll never guess, so I'll tell you. Remember the little guy who always sings? Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top. Just the way you like him and they're all red hot. Tasty little hot dog and some pop. Just the way you like him and they're all red hot. Crunchy, crunchy bag of lunchy. Get your hot roasted peanuts. No. Ice cream cone. Get your dreamy, rich, and creamy double-decker ice cream cone. No. Equal in the middle with the mustard on top. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's living like a lot Eating Coney Island smorgasbord We're sick of chicken and we're tired of steak Well, nothing could be better than the weenies I made Once we start to eat them, we can't stop We'll pickle in the middle Sizzle off the griddle Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top uh, Two hot dogs, please A couple puppies coming up uh, would you like it maybe baseball style? Baseball style? What's that? Uh, three bites and you're out. <laughs> no, no, we'll just have the regular hot dog. Okay, what kind of mustard would you like? Well, what kind of mustard's in this jar? Hot and cold. Wait a minute, how can you have hot and cold mustard in the same jar? Stick your finger in, it's cold. Stick your tongue in, it's hot. <laughs> oh, well, just give them to us plain. We only came over to hear you sing anyway. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top. Just the way you like them and they're all red hot. Everyone that eats them wants a lot more. Better than a lobster toy middle. I don't care for coffee because it goes to my head. 
I'll let Nelson Eddy keep his shopping bread. We can gobble hot dogs till we drop. With pickle in the middle, sizzling off the griddle. Pickle in the middle and the mustard on top. We like the mustard on top. Yes, kid. Yes, that's who Mary and I saw at the ball game Friday night. And now for our... Oh, Mr. Benning, here's a telegram that just came for you. Telegram? Thank you, sailor. Well, listen to this, kids. Congratulations on your first anniversary as an honorary admiral in the Nebraska Navy. Signed, Governor Griswold. Gee, I almost forgot about that. I remember it, Jack. You got the commission from the governor of Nebraska. Yeah, Jackson, I remember it, too. It was a year ago this week. Yes, sir. And boy, were you a ham. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> remember how you... Mary, it's over now, so let's forget it. Hey, pardon me, Mr. Benny, but this sounds interesting. If it's anything about Navy, the boys would like to hear it. Oh, it was <laughs> nothing, sailor, nothing. Nothing? Come here, sailor. I'll tell you all about it. Mary, he doesn't have to sit on your lap. You use your recipe and I'll use mine. <laughs> Hmm. Here's what happened, fellas. You'll love this. Now, <laughs> It was a year ago this week, and I happened to call Jack's house to tell him that butter was getting short and he should stop using it on his hair. So I... Hello, Mr. Benny's residence, star of stage, screen, and radio, and we'll be the center pole at May parties for 10 cents a turn. Hello, Roger. <laughs> Chester, I'd like to speak to Mr. Benny, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Livingston. I wouldn't want to disturb the Admiral now. Admiral? Haven't you heard? Mr. Benny is now an Admiral in the Nebraska Navy. In the Nebraska... Oh, I get it. He's been made an Admiral in an imaginary Navy. Yeah, but he's taking it seriously. He made me sew gold stripes on his blue serge suit. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Rochester, how many stripes did he make you sew on? I don't know, but you could cut the sleeves off at the elbow and he'd still be a full admiral. <laughs> you mean he really thinks it's on the level? Yeah, when the milkman came this morning, uh, uh, Mr. Benny looked at him and said, What are you doing in summer uniform? <laughs> what did the milkman do? He turned to his horse and said, Stop laughing, he hasn't paid last month's bill yet. <laughs> Well, Rochester, tell Mr. Benny I call and then I'll see him later. Yes, ma'am. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, gone ever since the brass made Mr. Benny an admiral. He's been upstairs working out fleet maneuvers. I better get him away from that bathtub before he messes up the whole room. Oh, Mr. Benny. Say, boss. Oh, Admiral. What? Oh, oh, it's you, Rochester. Uh, glad to have you aboard. What do you want? Your breakfast is getting cold down on the lower deck. Oh, uh, uh, what have we got for breakfast? The whites of two eggs. What happened to the yolks? Don't you remember? You scrambled them and stuck them on your cap. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can't leave now. I'm about to engage the enemy. Now watch. The enemy fleet is over here. Boss, don't splash the water on the bath, man. Quiet. Now, I swing my carriers around like this and bring my destroyers over to this side and encircle them. There you are, Rochester. Now, if you were the enemy and I had you surrounded like that, what would you do? I'd pull out the plug and ground every ship you got. <laughs> Rochester, that was brilliant. Starting tomorrow, you're an ensign. Thank you, sir. Now, uh... Now go to the wireless room and send this message to Admiral Nimitz. Dear Chester, bathtub maneuver successful. Sided soap sank same. <laughs> Signed John Paul Benny. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> And that, fellas, is exactly what happened a year ago this week. All right, Mary, you glad now you told him? Oh, Jackson, you're not mad, are you? Of course not. Approve it. I want all of you to come up to my hotel room for a fish dinner tonight. What are we going to have? Mackerel. When I catch them, feed them, and dance with them, I'm not throwing them back. <laughs> Pray, Phil.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to read a farewell message that was written by Captain M.S. Sheehy, the former chaplain of the USS Saratoga. It was written in behalf of all of the men who have had the privilege of serving aboard this ship. Here it is. Dear Sarah, this is a love letter because you have been the great love of thousands of us who have paced your flight deck and boasted of your proud record. Nineteen years ago, Sarah, with bands playing and admirals standing stiffly at attention, you were grandly launched upon your career. For most of those 19 years, you sailed a peaceful course, and suddenly out of that peace came your courageous dash to Pearl Harbor, where you assumed your responsibility. Soon you were standing alone, the only American carrier between Tokyo and San Francisco. We'll never forget Guadalcanal, Bougainville, Rabaul, Nauru, and Tarawa. We'll never forget those 26 strikes on the Marshall Islands and your last engagement at rendezvous with the kamikaze. You staggered, fought back, landed your combat air patrol. And the next day, 123 of your men were buried at sea off Iwo Jima. That was a black day, Sarah. But we, your boys, remember the other days as well. All your gay parties, the celebrations given for every thousandth landing. The squadrons coming home like weary birds. The glory of dawn patrols. The long chow lines and the Sunday services. We remember how our hearts lifted when every plane took off. And how they sank when we counted the missing ones. To us, Sarah, you were more than a ship. And so we, your boys all over the world, want to say farewell. You are going to perform your last service for your country. Perhaps that atom bomb will put you in Davy Jones' locker. But you won't be lonesome there. For the old Lex and the Wasp and the Hornet and the Yorktown and your little sister ship who died so gallantly, the Princeton, will be there to welcome you. And we men of the Navy want you to know that wherever your hulk may be, your spirit, the spirit of the USS Saratoga, will go marching on and on and on. Independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen, men who spend their lives buying, selling, and handling tobacco, know that fine tobacco means a fine smoke. And remember this, lucky strike means fine tobacco. Year after year, these independent tobacco experts, present at the tobacco auctions, can see the makers of lucky strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means more real, deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 49, 49, American. And Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. This is Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. <laughs> L.S.M.F.T. 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 It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank Captain, Captain S.C. Ring, Commander D.M. Entler, Lieutenant W.B. McCarthy of the 12th Naval District, and all of the officers and men aboard the Saratoga for inviting us up here today for this special broadcast. It was a great privilege. Good night, everybody. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.